Welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. What if you needed to take a pair of humpback whales from the year 1986 to 2286? Just for the sake of argument, you really, really have to do it. The future of the entire galaxy depends on it. Let's say you already have the two humpback whales. George and Gracie are at the Sausalito Aquarium. They've got their passports and they're ready to go where no humpback has gone before. You've even got the time machine covered. In this case, the time machine is in the form of a Klingon bird of prey battle cruiser. You can use the ship's teleporter to beam the whales with the right amount of water right onto the ship. The trouble is, the only hiccup in this plan, you don't have a fish tank. That's right, willing whales, water, time machine, all ready to go, but no fish tank. It's infuriating. This is the dilemma Captain Kirk, Spock, and company find themselves in during the plot of the 1986 movie, Star Trek The Voyage Home. Their quest for a fish tank brings the intergalactic travelers to 1980s San Francisco to the Plexicorp plastic factory outside the city. Engineer from the future, Scotty, needs massive slabs of six inch thick plexiglass to build the fish tank for the whale VIPs, George and Gracie. Good news is the Plexicorp plant does happen to have the right material in stock. Things are looking up for the Federation team, but not so fast. Captain Kirk and the spacefarers from the future don't have the money for the plexiglass. They traveled across the galaxy and across time with no cash, no debit card, and no Bitcoin. Those communists at the Federation just seem to hate money. I don't even think the Starfleet uniforms have pockets. But engineer Scotty has an idea. He doesn't want to let their poverty destroy any hope for their mission to save the entire future. Captain Kirk, Scotty, and the whole Federation need that plexiglass, and they need it fast. Scotty decides to make a pitch to the head of the company, basically to make him an offer he can't refuse. He says to Dr. Nichols, the general manager of the plant, I notice you're still working with polymers, laddie. How quaint. To which Dr. Nichols gives him a look and says, of course we use polymers. These are the most advanced materials we have. What else on 1986 Earth would have the tensile strength to weight ratio and fracture toughness necessary to hold all that water in whales? To that, engineer from the future Scotty offers to give him the recipe for a miracle material that could do the same job as a six inch piece of plexiglass, but at just a fraction of the thickness. Dr. Nichols, the plant manager, is skeptical. But Scotty goes to work on the old computer and outlines a molecular structure and recipe for a new substance called transparent aluminum. Nichols can't believe what he's seen. This technology really is from the future. Transparent aluminum would revolutionize material science and technology altogether. So of course, Dr. Nichols agrees to give Scotty and Captain Kirk the plexiglass for the fish tank free of charge. These officers of the Federation break the prime directive to get this fish tank. They disturb the future timeline and grant advanced knowledge to the human species. It could easily have disastrous temporal ripple effects. When Dr. McCoy brings this to Scotty's attention, the old engineer responds, how do we know Dr. Nichols didn't invent the thing? When I saw this when I was maybe seven, I just had to get some of that transparent aluminum. How come I had never seen it? I wondered, could such a thing be real? Why was it so hard to find? I wanted a soda can to be transparent. Why couldn't I see my soda in the aluminum can, but I could with a plastic bottle? These things puzzled me as a child. Give me transparent metals. I want them. The trouble is, you won't find them anywhere, really. That's why Dr. Nichols was so overjoyed when Scotty showed him the recipe for transparent aluminum. There is just nothing like it. So why is this? Metals, like aluminum, steel, copper, gold, silver, and all the others, have one thing in common. The thing that really defines what it is to be a metal. 
an abundance of free-flowing electrons in the solid. That's why metals are so great at conducting electricity. All those electrons are unbound and free to move around from one atom to another, flow into houses and outlets, light up television sets, heat George Foreman grills and charge phones. Metals are solids with a built-in gas of electrons, invisible and great at moving electricity. But these unbound electrons are also just as good at absorbing light. That's why metals aren't transparent, they're opaque. That gas of free-flowing electrons easily absorbs the photons or tiny rays of light before they can get through the material. The idea of transparent aluminum goes against the general theories in material physics. However, I learned later that although material scientists hadn't cooked up transparent aluminum exactly, they had gotten close. Since free-moving electrons are so good at absorbing light, is there some way to bound them up in the aluminum to keep them so still that they can't absorb the vibration from a photon of light? If the electrons are bound up, the light can just slip right through the material. It would be transparent. Is there something we could add to aluminum to pin these electrons down? Maybe something like oxygen. There's a lot of that stuff around. Aluminum oxide, or alumina, is a transparent crystal of aluminum and oxygen with the chemical formula Al2O3. Oxygen sits in this material and holds the electrons in place, keeping them from absorbing light. Another way to think of this ceramic material, it's metallic aluminum dissolved in a crystal of oxygen. It's also called aloxide, or loxite, or alundum, depending on the particular forms or applications. Aluminum oxide occurs naturally as the mineral corundum. The precious gemstones, ruby and sapphire, are just different forms of aluminum oxide. In those cases, other atoms are added to the crystal, like iron or chromium, that give the crystal a red or green color. Another way to make aluminum transparent is to add some nitrogen to the mix to help pin down those electrons. However, this strategy of adding oxygen and nitrogen does come at some expense to the mechanical properties of the material. These transparent aluminum compounds aren't quite as ductile and tough like aluminum metal sheet or foil. Aluminum oxynitride is a transparent ceramic composed of aluminum, oxygen, and nitrogen. It looks like glass, but it's much stronger and harder. One could make a very high performance and expensive fish tank out of aluminum oxynitride. The legend of transparent aluminum was the beginning of my fascination with solid state physics and Star Trek. It was probably at least partly responsible for the direction of my career. What I still find fascinating is that everything we've ever seen or could see is made out of only a few different chemical elements. Just adding some oxygen to aluminum results in an alchemical transformation that you could never expect just by looking at the two chemical elements by themselves. This universe, ladies and gentlemen, is magic. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Canadian.